Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and like and subscribe for clarified hyphenates next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Snake Eyes from G.I. Joe, everyone's favorite G.I. Joe, or at the very least, the most popular one in general. Turns out, Guy in full body mesh suit who looks like a living mannequin is peak character design. One of the creators thinks that Snake Eyes is so popular because his lack of definition makes him easy to project onto. His lack of definition was because the company making Joe toys needed to save money, so he just painted a doll one color. Just goes to show, being cheap can be endearing. But you're so supreme. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need the weapons, swords, guns, throwing stars, which is very funny to me because you have guns. Throwing stars are harder to aim, less deadly, easier to dodge, and more expensive than bullets, but dang, they look cool. Next, we need to move like the wind. That way, we'll never be heard. Finally, that's kinda it. Snake eyes is really, really simple. That's the charm. Maybe we'll get a dog friend. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity will be number one. You fight with every weapon, but prefer the finesse or ranged categories. Wisdom next, your senses are almost as sharp as your blade. Also, we want a dog friend. Constitution after that, Storm Shadow is basically the same character as you, so he's gonna deal a lot of damage to you since you deal a lot of damage. Follow that up with strength, even if you prefer the lighter weapons, you're still in great shape. Intelligence is a bit low, you might be smart, but you don't ever really talk about it, so it kinda doesn't matter. We'll dump Charisma. Scarlet likes you, but you're not really a social butterfly. If you are, you're in your cocoon era. Snake Eyes is a human, not a yawn tea, but definitely play yawn tea in your home games. They're really fun. Humans can grab a feat like the Lucky Feat, which will give you three luck die you can spend to reroll an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. Watch out though, when your luck runs out, all you'll have left is net one. That's not the line. That should be the name of your Snake Eyes character though. Call them like Nathaniel One. Uh, yeah, good pun. Bump your dexterity and your constitution with two free points. Take survival for your skill of choice and the Outlander background for athletics and animal handling. Head out to the forest. Chop some wood. Hang out with a wolf. We'll kick things off as a rogue because they get the most skills like acrobatics, sleight of hand, stealth, and perception for the rest of your cool guy stuff. You get to be even cooler with two of those skills thanks to expertise. Doubling your proficiency bonus with two of those skills. I'll go for acrobatics and stealth right away, making sure you don't get grappled and helping you get your sneak attack off. That lets you add an extra d6 of damage to your attacks against a creature when you have advantage on the roll or an ally within 5 feet of the target. The only caveat is that you have to be using a finesse or a ranged weapon. All of Snake Eyes' favorites are ranged or finesse. That's a freebie. Now we can jump over to Monk, giving you martial arts to make unarmed attacks using your dexterity modifier instead of strength. Unfortunately, just because this meets the definition of a finesse weapon, it does not make your unarmed attacks a finesse weapon, unless you're in my games because I'm pretty cool. They also get bumped up to dealing a d4 of damage and you can make an unarmed attack as a bonus action after you attack with a monk weapon on your action that's any simple melee weapon without the heavy or two-handed property or a short sword we'll get even more options next level for now enjoy unarmored defense making your ac 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor it's pretty important since you can't use martial arts while you're wearing armor second level monks get even better without armor thanks to unarmored movement making you faster when you're not wearing armor it also scales up as you move up in monk and gets better with key points that you can spend to do cool snake stuff like Step of the Wind. That lets you dash or disengage as a bonus action with a double jump distance to really move like the wind. That's that's why it's, that's why it's called that ability. Vision Defense lets you dodge as a bonus action, giving enemies disadvantage on attacks against you and giving you advantage on dexterity saves. It's already your best save, so that should make fireballs much less of a worry. Flurry of Blows lets you make two unarmed attacks instead of one with your action. I always recommend a windmill kick. Windmill kicks are pretty rad. Third level monks can choose a monastic tradition. Can say monk is kind of basic, but it's really great for a straightforward fast fight man. You get two weapons you can call Kensei weapons, one ranged and one melee. With those you can do cool Kensei stuff like a Kensei shot, spending your bonus action to add a d4 of damage to your ranged attacks with Kensei weapons. Call a dart a throwing star and now it's almost good almost. Agile Parry lets you add two to your AC when you're holding a melee Kensei weapon in one hand and make an unarmed attack as part of your action. Block Storm Shadow's swords with your swords and punch him with your arm. If you're trying to block a sword with your arm, your arm comes off. Obviously, the real reason people love Snake Eyes though is because he has calligraphy proficiency from Way of the Brush. Every monk also gets to deflect missiles at this point, letting you reduce the damage of incoming ranged attacks by 1d10 plus your dexterity modifier and monk level as a reaction. If you drop the damage to zero, you could even spend a key point to throw it back. 
you can definitely use all of Storm Shadow's weapons because they're the same as your weapons. He just got dipped in white paint. Four level monks get slow fall, letting you reduce falling damage by five times your monk level as a reaction. So now running around on rooftops is not an issue. You also get an ability score improvement. Dexterity is our top priority. Your other skills are impressive, but the dexterity is what makes snakes legendary. Fifth level monks get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action instead of one, three with martial arts and up to four with a flurry of blows. All of those can deal more damage since your monk die is now a d6, though it's worth pointing out you can only use sneak attack once per turn. Fish for a crit, since that will double it. Stunning strike will help with that, letting you spend a key point to force a constitution saving throw on a creature you hit with a melee weapon attack, failing that they're stunned until the end of your next turn. That means advantage on all attack rolls for a free sneak attack and twice as many opportunities to roll a critical hit. Six level Kensei monks get nano carbonite blades with a magical Kensei weapon, making your Kensei weapon magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Somehow your punches also get that with key empowered strikes, but you do have to use a Kensei weapon for a deft strike, letting you spend a key point to add an extra monk die to the damage of one attack per round. Again, fish for the crit, then double that. Snakes love fishing. Seventh level monks get evasion, letting you take half damage on failed deck saves and no damage on successful ones. That means you can totally clear explosions. Just let the death settle, unsheath your sword without saying anything. So stoic, so edgy. Stillness of mind lets you remove the effects of charming or frightening as an action. It's easier to keep your cool when nobody can see how nervous you are. Eighth level monks get another ability score improvement so we can cap off your dexterity modifier to make you the best with all of your weapons. Except we still need some more weapons. Fighters get proficiency with all weapons and weirdly I'm gonna put dedicated weapon on the graphic here even though you got it from the second level of monk. That lets you pick any weapon without the heavy or special property to become a monk weapon as long as you're proficient with. So now that's the entire weapon catalog that isn't special or heavy guns included. For your fighting style we're gonna put fighting style in the graphic. I can't choose between archery for plus two to your ranged attack rolls, dueling to add two to the damage rolls of a weapon you're holding one-handed, thrown weapon fighting to add two to the damage of thrown weapons, or two weapon fighting to add your ability modifier to the damage of an offhand weapon attack. All of those are reasonable options for snake eyes. I personally like dueling or thrown weapon fighting best for you, but that's your call. You also get second wind letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. After your face has been melted off, you get pretty good at shrugging off boo-boos. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest for up to six attacks in a round with a flurry of blows. Just absolutely unload on someone. Obviously, if you're rolling a character named Snake Eyes, you should enjoy rolling dice. Now we're going to head back to Rogue. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, or hide as a bonus action. That pretty much eliminates the need to spend key points on Step of the Wind unless you need to jump. We're really here for the other rogue stuff that comes later. Like the third level of rogue, where you can choose a roguish archetype like Assassin. That lets you assassinate to automatically critically hit against a creature you've surprised. That's a 4d6 sneak attack or an extra 2d6 if you add your depth strike. Heck, you could even add 2d4 from a Kensei shot. And that's just the first attack. You also have advantage on attack rolls against creatures who haven't acted in initiative yet, so free sneak attack as long as you make the first move. I think Scarlet was probably the only person who made the first move on Snake Eyes, and that wasn't for violence, that was for smooching. You also get steady aim to give yourself advantage on an attack roll as a bonus action if you haven't moved that turn. Sometimes Snake Eyes does the sniper thing. This can make sure you're always good to go. Fourth level rogues get another ability score improvement. Start working on your wisdom that will help with your AC and your stunning strike DC, but most importantly, it'll help you get along with wolves. That's our third goal. Fifth level rogues get uncanny dodge, letting you have incoming damage as a reaction as long as you can see the source. Using deflect missiles for ranged stuff, use this for melee, and pretty much any hit that could possibly hit you is just going to deal less damage. You also get 3d6 sneak attack damage here. Sixth level rogues get expertise in two more skills. Perception will make sure nobody gets the drop on you, and sleight of hand will help you do cool knife tricks. Chicks dig knife tricks, or at least, I mean, Scarlet probably does. Now we're going to go back to Monk. That way, nothing will overlap. Nine level monks get unarmored movement improvement, letting you move up walls and over water without falling in as long as you're not wearing armor, helping you get to the rooftops so you can fall off of them without worrying because of slow fall. Tenth level monks get purity of body, making you immune to poison and disease. It's amazing that you didn't die when your face blew up, but it's even more amazing that that didn't get infected. Eleven level Kensei monks just get to deal more damage, letting you sharpen the blade to add one to your weapon's attack and damage rolls by spending a key point, and you can spend up to three. Your monk die also bumps up to a d8 here, so your dice and modifiers both get better, and your opening round crit will go to 2d8 from a deft strike as well. Assassin Kensei monk is a pretty clean combo. Our capstone is the 12th level of monk for one last ability score improvement. Unfortunately, we can cap off your wisdom modifier, but we can get it a little bit higher, making you harder and harder to hit. Now that we've hit level 20, let's figure out how viable this build is. First, you are an excellent ambusher with deft strike, action surge, sneak attack, extra attack, flurry of blows, and a sharpened blade, pairing with your assassinate to deal 14d8 plus 6d6 plus 42 damage 
damage against a surprised creature or around 116 with median rolls. You're also great at sneaking up on people to get surprise on them with a plus 17 stealth check. And then you're really consistent on follow-up turns with three attack standard, sneak attack, death strike, and sharpening blades all coming together to make you very good at fighting even after the first round. For weaknesses, sharpening blade uses a fourth of your key points. It's good, but you'll have to wait to take a short rest to use the other eight on all the other awesome monk stuff. You also didn't get to cap your wisdom modifier, so your AC is only 19, which is also pretty good, actually. Finally, you don't have a ton of health, with only 145 depending on how you roll, though you're really good at keeping damage off, and that's only mediocre at worst. Turns out, Snake Eyes rules. If you focus on being good at fighting and very little else, you can get pretty good at fighting. Just watch out for someone who's as good at fighting as you, or there could be a storm coming your way. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two videos every week. Join the Patreon for this character sheet and a whole bunch more, and sub to Tulak and Mango for more Tulak fun.